FMD is what we call a complex genetic disease. You can have a um, component uh, due to genetic factors, the things that we inherit from our parents, from uh, our ancestors, but also environmental factors that are necessary to manifest the disease, to trigger the activation, for example, of these mutations, defaults that we are looking for in uh, the DNA of patients. And both uh, components are important to manifest FMD, in my opinion. You can have the genetics but don't have the environment and never manifest the disease. And you can have the environmental factors and never have the genetic predisposition and to be protected from the disease. Right. It's yeah. like myocardial infarction, like hypertension, like type 2 diabetes. These are all diseases that has at the same time a genetic component and an environmental component. Very recently, we conducted a very small study of patients. Uh, we compared their genomes to genomes from controls, and we found that there is a variation on chromosome 6 that has more prevalence among patients compared to controls. And this uh, variation is intronic. It's in the middle of a gene, and it's probably involved in regulating the expression of that gene. And this gene is, uh, is called phosphatase and actin regulator protein 1. Uh, this protein is very interesting because it's uh, coming as a genetic cause in different diseases. At the same time, it's very intriguing because we don't know much about its function. So right now, I'm uh, working on uh, to understand how the variation is affecting the expression of factor 1 and uh, to understand the function of factor 1 through studies in cell lines. Uh, what we do is that actually we make a survey of the whole genome of the patients. Uh, we try to compare uh, what is uh, frequency between cases and controls. That's why it's very important to get big numbers. Uh, we uh, actually have genotypes. What we call genotypes is the calling for one variation specifically in the genome of the patient. And to try to uh, compare the frequency of these genotypes, between cases and controls. And because we are studying a large number of variation at the same time, we need to have statistical tools that make our decision accurate and precise enough. So we are never sure about the association. We are just sure about it is unlikely to be false, which is a bit different. And for this, you need statistical methods and statistical tests. Uh, on my team, I have uh, bioinformaticians, statistical, uh, genetic epidemiological fellows who will work with me on these aspects. And we deal with large data sets that are generated from the DNA of patients and controls. And we try actually different hypotheses. Are the variation more frequent at the geno genoty genotype levels? We have three genotypes. For uh, a combination of, of variation can have three types of genotypes for each of the variants that we study. We can study up to five, six million SNPs currently. This is our most recent survey, our most recent genome association study we are conducting right now. And uh, after that, we uh, have uh, absolutely the need to compare what we are uh, we have observed in our French patients to the ones that we have uh, in uh, the U.S., especially from the U.S. registry, the, the, the cohort that we access with Dr. Santi Ganesh and uh, Heather Gornick. And we compare actually our results to their results without sharing the data in the, of the patients. This is very interesting and very strong because we, uh, this allows us to continue working on our own patients, but compare the results between ours and their data. And when we found, as it was the case actually for the first gene that we described, FACT1, uh, when we found that there is consistency for the frequency of the variations and for the association with FMD, we can really be more comfortable about indicating this gene as a gene that may predispose to FMD.